You've mentioned on a number of occasions education and about how universities are more concerned with like the pure environment. They go on their tests and they, they defeat everything they're trying to do because they've got three cars burning old fuel propulsion systems mm -hmm. behind them. Is there, a, in your view, uh, an argument that really that the professors, that the people that are imparting knowledge to new university students should be a target of, of your new way of thinking? Yeah, they are. Now, how do they react to that? Uh, they do humbug us a bit, but then they shut up pretty quickly when we are actually moving and they're standing next to a parked vehicle that costs them a million bucks. Their exercise quickly becomes an exercise in ego where you've got a bunch of freshmen standing around a million dollar car claiming some uh, ownership of it, you know, and uh, broadcasting that to the people who walk by. That's actually been done for the last 15 years, crossing Australia. and it's Fascinating and interesting, but the real challenge has to be a challenge to the motor car. That's what's gobbling up the world's resources. There's a political climate globally that is uh, very tense right now, and oil is at the root of that, and I think we all know that. I think we all know that we're participants in a, in a system that is subjugating half the world's population. There's a guilt associated with that, and, and that's uh, basically what needs to be addressed. Not trying to break the 120 kilometer mark, not trying to get a solar vehicle to do what a car can do. You can't do what a car can do. Our vehicles don't go 120 kilometers an hour. But do you really want to be going 120 kilometers an hour? When you get in your car and go 120 kilometers an hour, or 50 kilometers an hour, you're in the most dangerous place you'll be, period, is when you get in your car. It's nice and warm and cozy, cushy seat, you've got the radio, you've got the heater, but you're, you're, you're taking your life into your hand, both on a global perspective, but also quite literally. You hit something, you're dead. And the kids in the back, they're dead too. Oh, and by the way, when they're commuting from the suburbs to downtown and you're doing the right thing by giving them a big SUV to protect them and stuff, you're gassing them to death. And you've seen that in cancer rate. Cancer's going to be the biggest killer in five years in Canada. And why is that? Well, they talk about the fuel burning for the generation of electricity, but they don't talk about the auto route where kids are getting stuck in their minivan in a row of cars that are emitting nitrous dioxide, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and what's really insidious about it is that those things, uh, they're silent killers. They, I mean, you can't smell them. Do you have to politicize this to bring this new energy source to public attention, or, or is there a way that you could do it without politicizing it? No, I, I think it has to be, uh, I think it has to be politicized. I think it has to be aggressive. I think it has to be uh, demonstrated in, uh, in a way that uh, uh, basically rips people away from their cars. I mean, if you stop to think about it, and you think about how the indoctrination starts around motor car culture, and at what age it starts, with the McDonald's drive through with the Dukes of Hazard, with the toy cars for the boys, with NASCAR on television, you know, these are sorts of things. I mean, it's going to take a massive force to rip kids and people away from something they've been accustomed to. I mean, you've got guys on the weekend, they work all week, and they've got their weekend, what do they do? They wash their car, and they've been going to work three weeks out of the month to pay for the payments on the car, and all they can do in their free time is wash their car, and they become this cult idol, this uh, object of worship that people are willing to wage war over. Yeah, it's going to take a real uh, punch in the nose to get people away from that sort of existence, and, and that's what we're trying to do by starting a, a movement as opposed to just trying to uh, you know, do a couple vehicles. The real push is not going to come from our 20 six vehicles, it's going to come from others and many others building their own and saying, you know what, maybe I don't need to get in my car to go to the grocery store, which is, you know, within a square kilometer of where I live. Maybe I'll take my solar vehicle and use the sun's energy and, and just maintain the simple discipline of parking it so that it's facing the sun, so that I have enough energy to return. You know, it's a lot like just the approach somebody would have with a horse. You know, you go back 80 years, well, you take your horse to your destination and you get off your horse and you water your horse and you take care of your horse and he returns the favor by giving you transport. It's the same sort of thing. These are very organic and people often ask, what's the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge has nothing to do with the vehicle and everything to do with the traffic we have to contend with to get to our destination. And it's the same thing with the bicyclists. It's the same thing with the pedestrians. These are second class citizens in, in North America. If you're an adult riding your bicycle down through an urban center, you're a second class citizen. And, and that shows. I mean, there was a statistic about 35 people a week get hit by cars in this city alone. A lot of the drivers don't even stop. We're in Montreal and we're in a, in, in like a, an industrial area and we've just been watching the, the vehicle going up and down at, I have to say, quite impressive speed. I know that you need to get people more aware of this and you've got to this fantastic state
stage where you're able to demonstrate a reasonable speed for zero cost, taking what the sum provides. What's your next step then? Yeah, well, we've done the, we've done the destinations. We've, we've gone to the events. We've gone to the festivals. We've gone uh, to uh, extended on extended trips into the country and, and that sort of thing. We've done that, and people have seen it, and I think people are relatively interested. The next step is really advancing the solar panels. There's the next generation of solar panels. You started with the crystal solar panels and the emulsion solar panels, which are basically a camera film, and the next generation, the nano crystal solar panels that are based off of a, a you know a polymer block, and, and we're, we're putting that on uh, aluminum. That has the promise of uh, providing uh, six times the level of energy as a regular emulsion type solar panel. How does it do that? It basically can strip electrons from a wider spectrum of light. Okay, so you're talking about gathering energy at night. You're talking about gathering energy from the person standing next to the vehicle. We all give off light. We all absorb light and give it off. When that happens and your vehicle can charge in the middle of night because you can absorb electrons from a larger spectrum, that's going to change our concept of energy when that gets out there. Very sci-fi though. You've got to admit, it's very, very science fiction for them, isn't it? Well, that's right. I mean, if you were to break down how much of their consciousness is uh, taken up by oil and oil-related things and cars and stuff like that, yeah, that's the space we need to occupy. Uh, unfortunately, right now, we all have uh, only so much uh, brain space or attention span, and it's being uh, hijacked by oil, basically, uh, oil-related issues, lifestyle, automotive lifestyle, things like that. That's the space that we need to uh, occupy and, and replace with uh, nanocrystal or, or the, the next generation of solar panels. What does Will recommend that people do to advance this concept? What's Will's advice to Joe Normal on the street? Our uh, message, I think, is pretty clear on the on the website. We want people to build their own vehicle. Okay, I'm an English major. Jeff Fisher is a, a long-standing artist. I believe that if I can put one of these together and there are lots of people who can do the same. And I would just encourage them initially to appreciate how dire the, the situation is and how desperate it's becoming and to start connecting some of the dots between you know what they see in the paper and what they uh, understand about their immediate environment. Download the circuit diet, download the electronic specs, work with the materials you have available to you for your body and frame. Lay out the wires, follow the circuit diagram and, and basically get started. These vehicles don't have any moving parts. They have a magnetic drive, okay? So once you get it up and running, you're not looking at any significant maintenance. You're not looking at any significant expense or pollution. Uh, you've got a free ride, and people have to recognize and, and, and get, on the, get on the free ride. But there are two obstacles, if you will, challenges that they have to first face. And one of them has to do with getting off the seated position. Don't sit down in front of the TV. Don't sit down in your car. Don't sit down in you know, in front of your computer at work and don't do anything. Stand up, go on the internet, get your electronics in order, find a surplus supplier, bring the goods in, put them in series, and do it again and again and again. Then put it on a lightweight frame, follow the diagram, and get on and ride and use it. And if, if people have that thought process and enough initiative to actually do it and to recognize when they're doing something versus when they're not doing something, watching TV is not doing something, you know. If people will take that first step, they'll find the process of making battery packs and making solar panels very rewarding. I, I can't tell you how rewarding it is to get on a vehicle that you've built, go and have it carry you uninterrupted for 15 kilometers until it's just totally pooped out and you stop and you have a, a sandwich. And while you're having your sandwich and you're getting your energy, your vehicle is gathering electrons from the sun and trickle charging those batteries that just carried you 15 kilometers. And 20 minutes later, you get on a vehicle that was dormant after being ridden for 15 kilometers, and it carries you for another 5 kilometers. And at the end of the 5 kilometers, you realize that your trip, your travel, what you've just done came from the sun, didn't kill anybody, didn't pollute any environment, didn't threaten anybody's life on the street, and wow, you didn't make any noise in the process either. It is a, a very uplifting experience, and it's not out of view.